Welcome to the DPV Podcast, automotive podcast where safety's third. I'm your host, Josh Hahn. And I'm Alex Barkley. And uh, today we have a really special guest with us. Yeah, no, he's, he's right here. Yeah, right here. Hey, I was looking for the special guest. My name's Liam. Uh, I'm with a lot of things, but I think we're gonna talk about that in a minute. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. We'll talk about that. Um, we do have some housekeeping issues. We haven't had a podcast in a while with the two of us. Dude, what you been working on? Well, uh, to get down here, um, you'll see some video on us, uh, on that revived uh, 77 Ranchero. I had to do a little bit of um, maintenance work to get reliability. I had to completely replace the dash out of one of my derby cars into it. Uh, put a distributor in it, put a new carb, fought some fuel pump issues, put on some brake lines. But yeah, just a lot of uh, maintenance stuff that you do to a rig that's been sitting for 20 years. Yeah. And uh, how about yourself? What have you been working on? Um, so I have been hitting it hard on the Big Chief, my 79 Jeep Cherokee. Uh, as you saw, I hacked the top off. Finally, got myself a bender from Affordable Bender. It is awesome. Um, so that inch and three quarter DOM tubing that I've been dragging around the country for five years, um, I'm finally cutting it with a tubing notcher, bending it, and making a cage. Uh, built the M715 style windshield frame. It's coming together. It's I'm, awesome. I'm it, I've seen it. It is amazing. So that's been kind of, yeah, the big project. And I bought some quads for my kids and they're loving it. Nice. Yeah. Good deal. Check out this backdrop. We are at SEMA. This is day three. It has been nuts since we've been here. We have been on the go. We haven't sat down. We've averaged over 30,000 steps a day, oh, yeah. which my phone says is about 15, 16 miles, which I can feel that in my quads. So it feels yeah. like 15, 16 How's miles your a day. Feet? Shoes, shoes are a must. You got to have good shoes. But the other game changer is Gold Bond. Gold Bond, mm. powder up, heavy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So our guest today, Liam from Jeep Sheep TV, among other channels. Um, Liam and I have been talking for like five years about trying to collab, but we live on opposite ends of the country. So it makes it a little difficult, especially in the automotive world. And he has been bugging us to go to SEMA for at least three years. And we finally made it happen, finally made the connection where we could meet in person. And super excited to have you on today. Um, we're going to talk about YouTube. We're going to talk about projects. We're going to talk about developing products. We got an exciting episode today. Yeah, yeah. and I'm not going to lie. Like, this is kind of one of those catfish, catfish situations. I thought these two were hot blondes. And it was like really awkward when they show up with the beards and they're like, hey, we're DPV. I'm like, oh no, like I yeah. totally messed that up. No, I, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Our profile picture uh, doesn't necessarily line up. There's that whole like, you know, your Facebook profile, your LinkedIn profile, yeah. and then there's your OnlyFans profile. Yeah. And was like, uh, dad you know, bods and short rods. Those that's are our, not the same that's our things. Only fans. Yeah, I was a little upsold, but you know, hey, we're here now. Yeah. And it's a really good time. All right. We're gonna be dealing with a little bit of background noise because we are at SEMA and there's there's burnouts, there's radios, there's uh, a ton of horsepower, uh, and we're in Vegas. We're in Vegas. Well, hold on here. What do you guys think the combined horsepower is of this event? Hmm. If you include the double cab. Oh yeah, you gotta include that. That's gotta include the double cab. 180 horse. Yeah. Uh, I mean, some of those bro dozers have huge turbos. I mean, there's yeah. I mean, it, it's thousands. I mean. What, 257,150? Yeah. Let's say that. The math, math. Let's yeah. do it. Yeah. Let's go with let's that. Do it. 200, wait, 200 some thousand? 250,000. 250,000 horsepower. 150. And then All you right. got to add the one. SEMA, if you're watching this, tally up the horsepower of every car here and let us know how, how far close off we are. are. Yeah, how, how'd, how'd we do? Uh, All right. Why don't we talk about you a little bit? Uh, what's Jeep Sheep? Uh, how did you get started in like automotive, you know, what what got you hooked on, on the Jeep thing? All right, yeah, so <coughs> I was born at, the, at one point, and I was really little, and then I grew up, and in that amount of time, I didn't have any interest in cars. <laughs> so, so many people in this industry are like, dude, I grew up working on cars, my dad worked on cars, like I loved them, you know, I was, that's not me at all, um, for whatever reason, actually my, Growing up, my stepdad, he's a car guy. He's totally a car guy. And I had a huge missed opportunity by having no interest in it at all. And I, I felt kind of bad, but I was doing other things. I was a busy kid. I had a lot going on. Um, I've always known I was an engineer. 
um, and I've always been kind of a nerd, so I was doing like computer stuff. Me and my buddies were really into filming and trying to make videos. They still exist on the internet. They probably shouldn't. Um, so, you know, you can try to find them if you want, but uh, we did a lot of like the action stuff. So muzzle flashes, blood splatter, blah, you know, we're teenagers. Like that was, that was cool. Yeah. We had a, like a Grim Reaper video or a fight in the Grim Reaper. And um, we had like no money and minimal resources, like beg, borrow and steal type stuff. And we're editing like all these special effects and after effects from like bootleg software. I mean, totally legal software. And uh, well, eventually it was legal, but that's beside the point. Um, and, and so yeah, we're doing all this stuff and you're talking like a day of work for a 30 second clip. And I got pretty burnt out on that. Ended up going to college for engineering. And in that time frame. I had a good friend of mine, his name is Byron, he's an awesome human being. Also he served our country, which I, you know, I applaud him for that, I thank him for that often because he did a lot. But anyway, he did a lot for me at that time period too because we were in college, he's 10 years older than me, he was established, had a garage, and we're out in the garage and he's just like, hey, this is how I clean this, this is how I do this, this is that. And at that time it became interesting to me, uh, working with yeah. him. And, and I was starting to see the parallels between engineering and, and getting your hands dirty, right? You know, it's like, okay, this works like this, and then here's the science behind it. And so that was really, really cool. And in that experience, I'm like, I need a, a better car. Because I, uh, I had a 1990 Plymouth Acclaim, which is, as you know, like the ladies just can't get off of those things. Yeah. Um, it was tan which is also the ladies' favorite color. Oh, yeah. You know, all of the girls. I had so many girls just everywhere um, all the time. I didn't know what to do with it. So <laughs> um, so I was like, I need something that's more interesting. And uh, talking to him, and actually my stepdad even said it. He's like, you are probably a Jeep guy. And I'm like, cool. And he's like, no, seriously, like, you're probably a Jeep guy. This is like way, way before any of this. And I'm like, all right. And, uh, and then we went and we bought a Jeep. With, me and my buddy Byron, uh, he help me go and get it and I couldn't even figure out how to get the doors open um, we tried to fill it up with gas it's a 94 Wrangler and the, the gas cap is behind the, the plate right mm -hmm. it was like 15 minutes of like looking for this gas cap and like I don't even know how to fill this thing up with gas <laughs> I had never like popped the hood on a car at this point you know and I'm like sophomore in college like yeah I've checked oil and that's about it like I know that the stick has liquid on it and that's probably good um, that was like not for lack of intelligence, just lack of caring. Like, I, I didn't care. Not that I'm saying I'm smart either, but anyway. Um, so I got this Jeep. It is a four cylinder with an automatic transmission with square headlights and probably 75 pounds of Bondo. <laughs> and, and I bought this and it shows so, so much how little I knew about cars because today I would have never bought something like that. Yeah. Um, but that Jeep defined who I am today. Uh, I get it home, immediately stuff is breaking, have no money, I have a friend encouraging me, and, and I have a stepdad who, who is a mechanic, right? And so he, like, between those resources, uh, I'm like, I'm gonna fix this myself, and they're encouraging me to do it. Um, and I did so many things wrong, so many things wrong that I'm still paying for today. You know, I actually just had to undo something I did back in the day. Um, and in that process, I went from like cars get you from here to there to all I can think about is cars. All I can think about is pistons and oil and gear ratios. And um, and just, just the other day I was thinking about, because oftentimes in this industry, I'm like, do I really still want to be in Jeeps? Do I really still want to be into cars? Like, what, what am I doing in this world and all that stuff? And I was at work and I'm watching a Polaris Ranger go through the dirt and you see the tread kick up dirt and you know, it rotates and like, just picture it with me guys. Zoom way in yeah. on just the, the tread and the dirt. And that got me so excited. Yeah. yeah. Just like when I see that, it just like calms me down. Yeah. And it gets me like, I'm just happy. And I'm like, no, this is where I belong because that, and like, if I like, if I close my eyes and I see a silhouette of a Jeep, I'm happy. Yeah. Like it's it's always been this thing where it's like, I don't know what it is about this vehicle. I don't know what it is about this industry. It just, I'm okay. That's awesome. And uh, so at that point, I'm like, yep, I'm I'm a Jeep nerd. That's that's who I am. 
and doing college, uh, doing engineering, just a lot of work, by the way. Any of you that are watching that are like going into college, I highly recommend engineering. Um, don't take on more than you can handle because it will humble you. And it did to me, it humbled me hard. Um, especially if you're paying for it yourself. You know, it's, it's a challenge. And that challenge is gonna sculpt you. So, not a bad thing, but, but it's gonna be hard and you're gonna wanna quit really bad. Um, really, really bad, you're gonna wanna quit a few times. But I, I do college, I didn't quit. The closest I came was like a week before graduation. I, I almost left because I sized something wrong in, in a calculation I was doing and we had to build this thing and I was off by a factor of 10. And I said, if I do this on a car, someone's gonna die. And I almost left engineering. Yeah. Truth is, there's checks and balances. And you know, if someone dies, it's because like 10 people did it wrong. So you're <laughs> kind of okay, but you know, make sure you check your work. Yeah. Um, I get out of college and I immediately get married and I immediately move to Metro Detroit area because I had decided I was gonna work on cars. I, I said, you know what, I'm living in Iowa there's no cars here, I want to build cars, I have to move. And so, without knowing a soul in Detroit, we packed up, moved out there, and uh, I started working for a tier one automotive supplier that, unbeknownst to me, until the interview, makes parts for the Jeep Wrangler. Nice. So, <laughs> I walk in the door and I'm like, yeah, you know, I want, a, I want a job really bad. I've been hunting for jobs for two months and I'm desperately broke and just got married and, um, and I'm like, so what do you guys even do here? <laughs> and, and they're like, oh, well, here, let's walk out to the line. And there's the Jeep Wrangler interior door panel. And I'm like, wait, that's the, the, the new one, the JL, right? They're like, yeah. I'm like, okay. I think we can do this, yeah. you know? And uh, I became the, the engineer that was responsible for that door panel for five years uh, at, the, at the tier one level. Um, I helped them with some, uh, making additional tooling for the, when the JT launched, because the, the volumes increased, you know, more Jeeps. Um, so we, we made additional tooling, I helped with that. That was a really good way to cut my teeth and kind of get into it. Um, I helped launch the half door, um, which was a really, and during COVID, that was fun. Um, and that like the automotive industry is so stressful. It's so, so much all the time. And, uh, and you have to have thick skin and that was so much fun. Yeah. You know, just going in and just feeling like you're a failure every day. Um, it, but like once you get past that, like you become a better person um, or well, or a much worse one, you know, it happens. And in that time frame, I was living in an apartment for the first like six months. I'm in my parking lot in the apartment and I'm like, I want to put a four liter throttle body on my 2.5 liter engine because the forums say it's better. And I could talk for hours about how it is and or isn't better and probably, probably isn't better. But, but at the time I'm like, I want to try this and I go on YouTube and there's no video about it. There's tons of info on the forums, but there's no video about it. And I said, well, what if someone went on these forums and made videos about all the things that people are talking about? Um, so that way it's more accessible and it's, you know, it's easier to follow and you get the visual. And so I said, well, I'm not going to do like I did in high school where we're spending three days for 30 seconds. Yeah. Actually, it was probably more like three to four weeks for 30 seconds, if I'm being honest. And I'm like, I'm not going to do that. I have a cell phone. It was company provided cell phone. So it was nicer than I would have bought for myself. And uh, I had a cell phone and I had my Jeep and I had a parking lot and I said, I'm just gonna film this. And the video actually turned out great. And I, I wanna say that video is well over 100,000 views now. Wow. Um, which is crazy and I almost feel bad because I like no longer think it's a great modification. <laughs> like it has benefits, but I'm like, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, we've, we've got some videos like that. Yeah. Like our, my, that fuel pump I put in like, some of it doesn't even make it anymore. Right, yeah. You, yeah, I've, oh, I got some of those too, where it's like, why are you watching this? Because that doesn't exist. Yeah. Um, but that's where it started. I said, I'm gonna just use the resources I have, and I'm not gonna just blow it out of proportion. I'm gonna edit it fast. I'm going to like disconnect myself from like making it perfect and just get it out there and get it accessible to people. And if it doesn't go well, I'm just gonna quit. <laughs>
well, it went well. Like that video did great. And everyone's like, dude, thank you so much for doing this. I did it in a Youth for Christ t-shirt. And so I had like a lot of comments like, dude, I love your shirt, you know? And, yeah. Um, and like that was kind of fun just having that and like I didn't even like think of it as a statement at the time because that's just I wore those shirts all the time I yeah. did a lot of volunteering with that organization I'm, I'm passionate about what they're doing for the kids and I was just wearing the shirt and it was just like here's me on the internet and that's just who I am then I was like well I got to make more of these yeah and just kept kept doing that and that's where Jeep Sheep TV came from no, I, I think that's a that's a great story and it um, yeah, you don't hear about that very often where s someone's not a car guy for most of their life and then they find it. But one thing I think is really cool about like finding your passion and like we're all believers. Um, like I believe those are given to us to make a difference in the world and have a positive influence. And so like Alex and I are we try to make our content as clean as possible. Alex calls it adult oriented family friendly content. Yeah. Hey, that's, that's all right. <laughs> yeah. So, um, something that you can watch with your kids. Yeah. And then they're going to see that and yeah. get interested in that. What we're doing opens up the doors to like give to people. Like some of my best videos are where I'm giving my labor to my friends to help fix their rigs, you know? And, um, it's, it's cool. It's very, I think, it's very cool that when you can find your passion and then it just like things just start aligning and your your story is awesome about that alignment like you found a jeep and then now you're working for jeep freaking making parts for them like that's that's right yeah yeah well and you know there's a i think it's the guy that does veritasium he's a youtuber and he had said it and like it just like clicked for me because he's like hey success is not about you being good at what you're doing it's like 90 percent luck he's like and you know he's saying luck but you know like we're we're thinking of of more of a divine intervention situation but he was like you know, all these people that did like these sprints all the ones that hold the record had a tailwind he's like that's it's not a knock on their ability but it's just an acknowledgement that you do what you can, but the rest of it, it's outside forces that are, that are pushing you forward. Yeah. And, and yeah, I can see that in my life where it's like, I'm here and then like this happens. And a year later I look back and I'm like, dude, someone's orchestrating that behind the scenes because there's no way that made any sense. Yeah. Yep. Well, and, and part of it, I think, um, you talked about how the automotive industry is hard and, um, it's one thing I like about it. I like things that take grit and, um, the guys that have to like work to where they get to, like yeah, they don't yeah. just nothing's just given to them. I like the guys that like struggled and like the trials and tribulations of like getting to that final stage. Right, and and I think the way that you make it in this industry in YouTube and in automotive is just not quitting. Like you're gonna have failure after failure after failure, but you just gotta keep trying. Like the Baja 1000 was a huge. Uh, influence on me on that when we actually experienced that about like how to just not quit like you're not done until you quit right. and the different mindsets of like when you run into this adversity whether do you like the guys that want to pack it up and go home versus the guys who are like no it doesn't matter what it takes and we got to do this and yeah and there's it. those two mindsets and i i love the guys with the mindsets of we have to figure out how to get how to fix this how to move on not yeah. oh we're not gonna get first let's wrap it up yeah. Well, and I remember too, like, because if, if someone works with me today, I'm fairly nonchalant about a lot of things. I'm just like, okay, whatever, we'll figure it out. It's not a big deal. But I remember when I first started my, that job in the automotive industry, coming home and like my wife's sitting on the couch and I just, I would come in through the door, go straight to the bedroom and just throw myself on the bed because I just couldn't do anything else anymore. And, and she's like, what was it today? And I'm like, dude, I don't know how to make these people happy. And it was like that for months, where it was just like, I, it was hard, and you yeah. have to get through that. And, and it did, yeah. and I'm glad I did. I would say that we're kind of on the smaller scale on YouTube. I mean, we're, we're growing, we're all growing, um, but we kind of fall into that micro-influencer thing. Um, and one of the things that Alex and I have always liked doing and have tried doing, as, even as a small channel, is putting on events and 
putting on events as a small channel. <laughs> Sometimes it's only you and your buddy that show up. Yeah. It is so uneventful. It's so uneventful, but still awesome. We've, we've ran a Gambler 500. We did have one other guy show up. Yeah. Uh, we uh, kind of did a little play on the um, Hot Rod Power Tour. We ran the uh, Under Power Tour. And uh, those were both, we have done that twice, and those were both fun events. First time we had, what, like three or four yeah. people show up. Uh, this last time it was just Josh and I. But we still, we got our classics out, we drove them, and uh, it was awesome. It was a great time. Yeah, it was an awesome, awesome time. And I know that you have put on a few events through Jeep Sheep and through Gone Jeepin', right? Yeah, yeah. So Gone Jeepin's the other channel I'm a part of. We didn't quite cover the origin story of that. Um, but long story, I basically just asked to be a part of it is kind of, that's the, that's the truncated version of all that. I just said, Hey guys, you're cool. Can I be a part of that? And they said no, <laughs> because they didn't want to pay for content. And I said, no, 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 no. I'm not charging for content. I just want to learn. And being quite a bit younger than a lot of the other members, um, they're like, Hey, that's really cool. Uh, so anyway, that's how I got into Gone Jeep and abridged. Um, I'm trying to think back to like what events I ran that you're thinking of uh the backyard oh yeah backyard overland tour so that was uh me and joe shiggle were like we want to go across the up and we kind of want to like get people involved and he, he's not so much on the influencer side of things i really wanted to like try and get sponsors yeah uh because i wanted to see what that was like and so i had like my own goals he just kind of wanted to have a good time which yeah obviously yeah um, he has a M715 with a V10 swapped into it. Rad. And it is the coolest thing ever. Um, Dodge V10 or Ford V10? Dodge. Okay. And, uh, and then I took my 72 Commando on that trip, which I had the oil pan off of it, I want to say three days before leaving. Nice. So That's it was, perfect. It was one of those. Yeah. yeah. And then it ended up blowing up at the end of the trip. Uh, the, uh, the rocker arms they like the push rods went through the rocker arms oh. and I it was it was a failure of the rocker arm thankfully it wasn't a high five of the the internals um, but yeah I, I think the engine builder he, he put the wrong wrong rockers on it. I think he pulled them off of an inline six and that was because the geometry was different and I'm like oh my gosh you got to be kidding me no wonder it runs it was running so bad but we it did like the whole trip um, I did get sponsors. Tyree Lights was the, the lead sponsor of that. That's right. Um, and they went on the trip, and we had a great time. Uh, I'm going to forget all of my sponsors. Unofficial Use Only was one, and we're going to talk about them later. And uh, Rancho Suspension did a lot. Dynamax Mufflers, um, they outfitted my Jeep and Joe's Jeep. And I'm going to forget people. Trails Off Road was there, and Tread Lightly. Tread Lightly was a sponsor as well. Sweet. So That is very cool. That so is very cool. Yeah. What did what did the communications look like uh, to set that up? Because you know, I'm I would be interested in doing something like that. We we kind of want to bring back the underpower tour, yeah. um, but like it'd be cool to have some help. You know. Yeah. So um, speaking of divine intervention, I so I oh Maximus three. This is this is how this all ties together. Is Maximus three um, around the corner from where I was working is this off-road shop called Maximus 3. They make some pretty awesome off uh, aftermarket parts for the newer Jeeps. And I'm driving by, awesome Jeep sitting in the front yard. So naturally, I'm just going to walk in the door and introduce myself because that's a cool Jeep. And through talking with them, they are kind of buddies with, I, like, I want to say it's like the small network of like some of the most uh, down-to-earth aftermarket people I've ever met. It's like all of the, like, the, the good guys just kind of hung out together. And that's, um, so they were like, you gotta meet Todd over at Trails Off Road. Uh, you gotta talk to these guys at Tyree. There, there's kind of a, a group of people that are in like the Metro Detroit area and they all kind of know each other through like mutual contacts. And I got introduced to, to Mike, who's, he's no longer at Rancho. He's actually now at Tread Lightly. Oh. Um, and I, I got introduced to him. He hooked me up with the, uh, the, the Dynamax and the, the Rancho and then uh, Tread Lightly. I think I had met them at an event and uh, through the Gone Jeep and stuff, became friends with them, and I said, hey, I'm doing this. And so it was like I found a pocket of people that all knew each other, so when I'm, I'm working with one, there's like, 
it's kind of like going coming into a party and they're like, yeah, he's cool, it's okay. And it was it just was like cool. a domino effect. You meet one guy and they just yeah. introduce you to the next, they introduce you to the next. All right. Yeah, and then um, yeah. and then unofficial use only, Greg Henderson. I, I met him through Gone Jeepin, and him and I are working together on a lot of things, and he knows everybody here. Like him walking through SEMA show is impossible because he gets stopped every two feet. Yeah, um, I noticed that. Yeah, and uh, he also introduced me to a lot of people and really early on, without knowing much about me, like stood up for me in the industry and, and really has had my back the entire time. And so like he'll introduce me to people and I want to say, and he might not remember this, maybe it didn't even happen because I was, I was pretty tired that year, but I want to say we were at the show and at one point he said, yeah, this is Liam, he's one of the, like, the best people I've ever met. And I'm like, what type of introduction is that? Yeah, <laughs> like, who yeah. Says it's coming that? from him. Yeah, and yeah. I'm like, okay, Greg, um, like who are you talking about right now? Last last night when we uh, left the, the little uh, social event, um, we said goodbye to Greg, and he's like, "Hey, I want to do something stupid with you guys." That's a compliment for us. Yeah, that's a bad thing to say to us because doing stupid stuff is right up our alley twenty four seven. Yeah, <laughs> and he will. Oh yeah. Yeah. All right, so Liam, one of the things we do on every podcast episode we call it the fantasy build I'm, I'm already looking all right i'm looking so we've got something for you this is something you might not be very familiar with um hopefully you know in what direction to take this um <laughs> oh is there a right and wrong answer uh no oh, okay. but you will be judged and laughed at if you do choose wrong oh i'm choosing wrong for sure um we sometimes like to find um stuff that wouldn't actually be like your normal stuff it might be like kind of crazy so yeah. Okay, so I was trying to look for something for you guys that's just rusty beyond all imagine. And for whatever reason, Marketplace is like, here's all of these perfect cars. <laughs> I'm like, what's wrong with you? So you talk about the rust that you have up in your area. We yeah. actually, the Ranchero is rusty by my standards. For what? And um, at the footwell on the passenger seat, there's a hole that's like this this big, and that's about it. Yeah, that's not rusty. I got, at, at the footwell. Yeah. But uh, if you get some. Um, uh, knock off uh, mats from Costco. Right. Those Michelin mats, they go right over the hole. You don't even know it's there. Yeah, it's like it, you fixed you're it. You're fine. Yeah, that's like, it's like not Bondo even and an paint. issue. Um, I had, I was in the junkyard and there was a 95 Wrangler where the frame, I kid you not, was the, the so it's a box. Yeah. It was the top half and it was a strip on the bottom. And then the leaf spring mounts in, in the middle of the frame. And then it was like, it was floating down, connected to the top half, and it was like a little like tack welded piece of metal like holding the bottom of it. And Perfect. That was the frame. The frame. Um, and that's not uncommon. Terrifying, but not uh, have uncommon. You, have you ever seen one of these before? You know, this, well, for those, this is a Jeep I mean, YJ. This is a joke. Um, I'm pretty sure I've seen a couple of these. This is right. this is your That's not thing. it. That's I just not it. We were just going to pull a fast one on you. Oh, right. I was, I'm like, you know. You've never seen one before. You don't know how, how to yeah. work on them. But, uh, I'm very familiar with that Jeep. I'm familiar <laughs> with that This platform. one does have a couple extra cylinders. Oh, yeah. 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 I, You know, I love the four-cylinder. It is a very reliable engine. I yeah. still, if someone's like, I'm buying a Jeep, I'm like, don't buy the four-cylinder. I think that, that four-liter is a really reliable engine, the too, though. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So the four liter was developed off the four cylinder. They made the four cylinder first, the okay. two point five liter, and then they developed the four liter off of that. Okay. And so, um, and then the four liter ended up getting a lot more upgrades throughout the years. So they just kind of like canned the four cylinder. Yeah. yeah. And and stepchild type stuff, but um, but, but it, it came off of that platform, and both like there's so many interchangeable parts and the reliability aspect. Imagine a inline six where if it overheats the head doesn't work that's the four cylinder yeah that's like okay. it's its only weakness and the four cylinder doesn't have that weakness yeah uh, it also it doesn't long. have any yeah. horsepower the, that four cylinder any day of the week you can find a half dozen um cherokees for sale with that yeah. in it with over two hundred thousand miles that have been beat on by high school kids and yeah. they're for sale that run and drive yeah i mean i i used to religiously overheat mine yeah i mean to the point where it's off the gauge <laughs> and it's just like yeah man let's do it again yeah so uh, this is you, actually what you you're got with. uh ten thousand dollars total purchase price is in there yeah so for ten thousand dollars uh go ahead and describe what it is i'll also put pictures on the screen all right oh my gosh yes okay this is one of my favorite cars this is a 1981 eagle sx4 four-wheel drive for three thousand bucks so i'm looking at uh just just over six thousand dollars to get her going 
Uh, the interior is mint, so I don't have to touch that. The exterior is, by my standards, also mint. So, like um, so we're good. It comes, and I, you guys told me before this is off-road theme. So it comes with a bull bar. Yeah, it, it comes with a couple extra accessories. Yeah. You know so what I need? that's done. I'm not loving that there's no grill on it. Yeah. Um, I, that's probably because of the bull bar. But maybe I'll do something there, just like expanded steel or something like that. Oh, no, it's in the back seat. We're good. There, oh, there's a lot in the back seat. So it's, you know. <laughs> you might a need a couple hours to get it running. Yeah, I got to get the shop vac going. The engine is a mess. I'm going <clears> to <throat> spend I'm gonna spend most of my money getting this running. In the description, it does say that it needs a head gasket. Oh, that's not a problem. Um, I mean, it's an inline six, although there's, it's an emissions inline six. There's hoses everywhere. So this, the vast majority of my time is going to be getting this together. I'm not rebuilding it. I'll do the head gasket and, um, and like anything that's just not working. Leaks, whatever. Um, I'm not pulling the engine just because there's, that's such a mess of wire. Now, wait, whoa, whoa, what's my timeline? Whatever. Timelines, whatever. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's, your, it's your time. Okay, I'm pulling, yeah. I'm pulling the engine out. We're deleting all the emissions. I don't live in an emission state. Yeah. And um, I really like simplicity. I will probably mess with the carburetor for a couple months before I blow half my budget on an EFI system. Perfect. Um, just to Super keep... reliability on the trail. That's good. Yeah. yeah, honestly. I think you can get an ACES kit for like under a thousand bucks. Yeah, they're coming down. Yeah. Um, but, you know, there, there's still some cost associated with that. You got to upgrade the fuel pump. Um, and then while you're doing that, you might as well go through the fuel tank and half the time, well, by me, half the time they're rusted out, so you gotta get a new one. This might have a poly tank. Well, that would be good. Yeah. Uh, I, it's hard to I don't know, I think my, my XJ, they, I got a 93 XJ and it's a steel tank. Yeah, I don't think they were poly back then. My 95 ZJ had a poly tank. So, um, suspension wise, I'm leaving it alone for right now. No lift? No lift, right. um, but we are gonna throw 35s on it. Love it. Uh, and so there's gonna be a lot of cutting. The Sawzall lift kit? Yeah, the Sawzall lift kit, but I love the way things look when they're factory, so I'm going to be like remaking those fender wells. Oh, nice. Um, to like, it's going to look like it was born with these tires. The problem is I'm gonna have a really hard time turning because it's gonna rub the frame. So I'm gonna have to take a lot of the body panels off and start like notching parts of the inside and then at the end of the day I'm gonna give up and have a really bad turning radius um, That's right. because you know whatever are these body on frame I don't I believe so they might be cuz no, cuz like yeah cuz the XJ was a huge like unibody thing for yeah. for the brand I mean this is pre Jeep I mean, this is not non Jeep but they were all tied together yeah. um, fun fact the AMC Eagle saved the Jeep because when they were going to the YJ, they had no money to, uh, to upgrade this vehicle. And they, they blew their entire budget on, on the interior. Mm. And so they developed all of their engine stuff on the AMC Eagle and then just like pulled the powertrain over. That's why their powertrains are so similar yeah. is because the Jeep guys did all their development on the Eagle and then just threw it in the Wrangler because they had no money. Mm. They were giving nothing to develop the YJ jeep is just everybody else's parts yeah yeah so you know i'll run it like that for a while and then find out that i might have like I, it might not do what i want it to do so maybe we'll start doing some solid axle on the front just for fun yeah those axles might not like 35s it would be pretty cool to not go full trophy truck but do a trophy truck style independent front suspension i mean that brings it beyond ten thousand well, dollars but to have the long travel independent on a car like that with 35s would be rad. Yeah, so through my current employment, I have access to some resources that can get me some suspension parts for within this budget. Nice. Okay. And so, I mean, I could do some trophy truck, like some trailing arm, uh, you know, large wishbone on the front. I could do some of that with some parts that I scrounge off of side-by-sides. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, and the car is small enough that that would work. 100%. Yeah. Oh the the side-by-sides are getting so heavy now that oh, yeah. a lot of their parts, and I didn't say this online, a lot of their parts can, could potentially be put on cars um, because the, the sizing is just getting so close now. Yeah. So um, so you're not hearing that. You're not doing that. That's what I'm doing. It doesn't matter. Um, so, <laughs> uh, But yeah, so I think eventually I might get some side-by-side -side goodies. And, uh, and as far as powertrain goes, I'm leaving the powertrain alone for a while. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Be sweet little eagle. 
So, and then, you know, oh, Screaming Eagle. Yeah, everything I just described could be done for like three grand, and then you know how things go double it, and there you are. Yeah. We're at our budget. And then uh, buy, use every last penny on tires. Yeah. Get yeah. The best yeah, tires you can yeah. get. I think oh, no, general. I come to the SEMA show and I just beg someone for tires. Yeah. Like, please, I'm, I'm over budget on this build. I think some red letter gen general grabbers would look. Yes. So I'm kind of a sucker for BF Goodrich. And yeah. so yeah. I might throw KO2, actually KM3s would look really cool on yeah. there. Um, also, or like a rally tire with a rally wheel, like okay. a Sparco wheel type thing with the multiple spokes would be really cool on this. Yeah. Sweet. All right. All right. You what do you got for us? Alex can build this one. Okay. Uh, uh, I got to look quickly at what I saved and then I will. Okay. This is 6750 bucks. So right. your budget is small. That's all right. I can, I can work with it. Oh, this is uh, the um, Suzuki Everyvan, or like a Suzuki carry-all. Uh, little guy. Is, here's, um, <laughs> you little might not guy. notice this about me. I am a larger individual. Uh, <laughs> we actually have the Suzuki single cab at work, um, and I don't fit in him. But even better. <laughs> this is the van version. Is this four-wheel drive? I have no idea. I was falling asleep last night going through Marketplace. Like, I have to find something for these guys. And like, so, as my eyes were closing, I clicked it. So. I do know that for a thousand dollars, I can get the four x four running gear for this. So I could turn this into four x four, scrap everything else out of there, put move the seats back like eight ten inches, not have a middle seat, have just a back seat. Um, definitely paint it up like the A team van, call it the B team, B -team. and it would be awesome. This is the. It's an enclosed side-by-side, -side is what this ends up being. What size tires? Um, I think Keep 31s. Mind, like a, a 25 would be huge on that thing. I think like 31s. I think a guy could get away with Oh yeah. little baby 31s. Yeah. And um, that makes my tire budget a lot cheaper. Especially since you can find, find 31s on Marketplace or, or Craigslist for like 300 bucks. They're everywhere. Yeah, it's everyone that buys a stock Jeep that then puts a lift kit on it and they have their factory tires to. Yeah. 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 But I'm pretty sure this has like 13 inch wheels. Oh, yeah. Um, it is four lug. We'll do a little lug adapter and uh, we'll uh, get it. This would be awesome. Throw a roof rack and a light bar on the top. Can you it, get portals for those? I mean, that's, that blows your budget. But yeah, this thing you can is get your gear reduction. clean. Pull portals off a of side by side. Yeah. Which it still blows your budget. They're not any cheaper just because they're on side by sides. But it would be the appropriate size and right. you could get your lift with it and your gear reduction yeah this is how many times are you rolling it over i think this is gonna be very top heavy <laughs> we might end up with uh a little bit of body damage which is unfortunate because this thing is really clean it's actually really clean yeah but uh yeah i think that one of these with an exo cage would also look very very cool oh yeah i have a buddy with a bender and um i have uh, access to really cheap inch and a half uh tubing so that budget would be just my time, which is worthless. Right. So um, I think an uh, inch and a half uh, uh, DOM tubing on a exo cage on a yeah. vehicle this small, I think it'd be okay. Yeah. Sweet. Then take it to LB. Yeah. So right on. Well, uh, we talked about Jeep Sheep. We talked a little bit about gone Jeeping. We got a fantasy build. What's uh, the kind of future directions of Jeep Sheep and the other stuff that you got going on? Oh, you're, you're catching me at a weird time because I'm trying to figure that out right now. Yeah. Um, I, I really don't know. But there is something I'm working on that kind of is higher priority than everything else at the moment, aside from my actual job, because I'm a full-time engineer um, at, at, at Polaris Industries. So I work on side, that's why I keep talking about side-by-sides, you know, whatever. Um, so I work there. If you guys are on the fence about getting a Polaris, just go buy one so that way I can get a bonus this year. Um, I have a Polaris Ranger crew, and I love it. It has been absolute game changer if you have property. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, just buy like three, four, five, six of them, and I'll thank you later. It's cool. Uh, no. Uh, so aside from all of that, and aside from being married and loving my wife and hanging out with her, I'm also developing aftermarket products for the newer Jeeps with Greg Henderson of Unofficial Use Only, who I met through Gone Jeepin. Um, he is a world-renowned SEMA builder. He's been coming out here for a really long time and has made builds that just, they just work. They're just right. And he's always very attention to detail and he takes them out and wheels them in Moab afterwards. So there's no Bluetooth drive shafts. There's none of that. He's like, if it doesn't work, it doesn't go. And that's always been his mentality. 
And when, when I met him, I walked in his shop and he's like, yeah, I built this, I built that, I built this. And in my head, I'm like, that was my favorite build of SEMA that year. That was my favorite car I saw on the cover of that magazine. That was my favorite this, that was my favorite that. And all of that was here and that was you. You're That's kidding. Awesome. And that was one of those like, oh, you know, one of those moments. I'm like, this is insane. And I remember being like, Greg, I, I need to be a part of this. And he's like, well, I have all these ideas when I build these cars and people are like, that's so cool. I want to buy that. He's like, but I, I can't mass produce anything because um, he builds it with his hands, you know, and he's not an engineer. He doesn't put it in CAD. And I'm like, well, that's what I do. And so for a few years, we talked about trying to find a way to work together on these things. And then um, after leaving the company I worked at and, and learning that they weren't going to replace the net on the JL Wrangler, the new Jeeps, uh, and the net is a horrible idea. It was, it was just terrible. And when I worked there, I told him it was terrible. And we tried really hard to replace it. And, you know, just normal corporate stuff, it just didn't happen. And uh, so when I left, I was like, well, I know a lot about that door. I know how it goes together. I know a lot about just the interior of the Jeep in general. And I, I'm going to build something that um, that fixes that. And so working with Greg, you know, and him being a Jeep guy um, and very well renowned, I said, Greg, you know, what, what do people want? He's like, they want a cup holder. I'm like, awesome. So we put a cup holder in it. Um, on the rear door, I'm like, what do they want for the rear door? He goes, man, all these guys are hardcore off-roaders, but they also have kids. We need a spot for their kid's tablet that holds it tight. And so we made sure to integrate that. And so um, I did do the bulk of the design, but Greg did help with some of the direction. And we decided to launch the, the door pockets uh, prototypes at SEMA last year here. And now we are in full production. And um, there is a little bit of a battle at first, but we decided last year and have stuck to it from then on till now that everything is going to be manufactured here in the US. Um, so we're a brand new aftermarket parts company. Greg's been in the industry for years, but never made parts. And now he's coming in, sticking his neck out on the line, and we're producing parts under his brand. And we're doing all of it here in the US where it is not inexpensive, by the way. No. And we, like, the tooling was done here. The parts are made here. Uh, we've got apparel that, he, uh, that he's selling now that he's trying really hard to source everything here. Um, the next product is being made here. The tool is here. All of it's going to be here because we believe that we should be investing in our own communities. Yeah. And that's just, it's just more responsible when you do that. If you call unofficial use only, you have an issue with your door pockets, like there's a strong chance the owner, Greg, is gonna answer the phone and he's gonna take time out of his day to talk to you about the product that you bought because we just care so much about the people in this industry. We love the Jeep, like what it means to people, what it is, the design, it, it looks like it belongs on the Jeep because there's nothing wrong with the Jeep. Yeah. You know, it's like a lot of these things, they, they change the look of it, they change this, they change that, and there's room for that in the industry, but we want it to, we want to just make a Jeep a Jeep because we, We've been, you know, like we've loved this vehicle for a long time in, in our lives, each individually, and we want to make sure we pay homage to that. And so we've been launching this brand. It's been a lot of work, especially because I no longer live in Michigan. I live in Wisconsin now. Um, so I'm doing everything like remote and I'll come home from work, sit down on the computer and develop parts like all night and then send it off. And, you know, it's been a wild ride, but we, That's pretty sweet, we're in full production. Yeah, very cool. Well, Liam, this has been a very fun time, a very fun conversation, very cool, all the different directions that it's gone. Uh, <laughs> where can uh, our listeners and viewers find you? Well, um, on the internet, probably, uh, sometimes in Wisconsin. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. No, uh, so... We'll just link your home address down below. Yeah, just okay. right there at the bottom. We'll put a Google Maps link yeah, to his... Yeah, just a pin. Head. Stop on place. in. Um, if something breaks down, I'll help you fix it. How's that sound? That, that is actually true. If you're like driving by and you're like, help, like if I'm home, yeah, I'll help you. No, no. Um, so Jeep Sheep TV, like the animal, right? Um, pick that name because they sound similar. It works at the head. Uh, anyway, Jeep Sheep TV on YouTube, deep, Jeep dot sheep on Instagram. Um, if you want to email me, Jeep Sheep TV at Gmail and then gone dash GPN on on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Um, definitely check out Gone Jeepin' because I'm not the only one making for that. And there, there's a lot of really awesome people um, that we just didn't even talk about in this. That's a whole, like that we could go days on that one. And then um, and then unofficial use only is just unofficialuseonly.com, unofficialuseonly on Instagram, Facebook, and uh, 
YouTube. Right on. And I'll make sure I put uh, links to all of those channels, all those spots in the description below, in the show notes, etc. A couple questions that I like to ask my guests. Okay. Kind of put you on the spot here. First question is uh, one piece of automotive advice for the person that's either been in it or just just starting doesn't matter just one piece of automotive advice like industry advice or like or you know ready tidy lefty loosey type stuff i guess just how to do this hobby well ah so how to do this hobby well is figure out who you are and be you yeah i like it yeah there's so many people in this industry trying to be not them and I've spent a lot of time trying to be not me. Um, I've spent a lot of time being like, I'm going to do this with my channel. And then it was great. It was cool. No one watched it because that's, it's just, it wasn't me. It's hard to be unauthentic. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and to like portray that on camera. Like if you be yourself and be actually authentic, I think it's easier to, to do that. And it shows in the, yeah, in well, the, in your content that you create. Yeah. And you'll eventually find your people. You'll find, quick tangent, quick tangent. Um, so on my channel, my, one of my most popular series is I supercharged the four cylinder. Yes. And I'm, someone had said like, hey, go on to this Facebook group um, because there's something on there you need to see, like it's something interesting. And it is the 2.5 liter Jeep engine performance enhancement group, or like it's a really long title um, or something like that. And I go on there, I'm like, this is awesome, you know? And I, I, I do the, you know, when you join a Facebook group, you say, hi, this is me, and you put a picture, right? Yeah. And I say, hey, guys, um, my name's Liam, and I like Jeeps, and I, I do YouTube stuff sometimes, and, you know, whatever, but I'm, I'm here, and this is a cool page, thanks. And um, the first comment is, dude, we know who you are. <laughs> and then it was like... A, it was the a, Liam fan, fan It was a page? ton of comments of, like, Oh my gosh, like we're huge fans of your channel. And it, there's a thousand people on this page. Yeah. And that is that was my entire viewer base in one bucket. Oh, and that's I cool. like I found my people and I'm like, this is the craziest thing I have ever that experienced. Is awesome. Because to them I was famous. And I'm like That is awesome. Yes. Um so yes, be you, stay, stay you. And then the thing that I am really bad at is when you post something or you do something, or you build something, and it's a total flop. Um, learn from it and, and stop taking it so personally. Yeah. Because yeah. I mean, I, I did it the other day. It ruined my entire day. I mean, I like my heart rate probably like didn't drop for like eight hours because I was just so stressed because something I did didn't go the way I planned, and people didn't like it the way I thought they would. Yeah. And you just can't do that. So my other question, uh, which I think. You kind of did, but uh, it's one piece of just general life advice. Um, <laughs> silly one, look up. I like it. Yeah, so, okay, here's a great example. We are in the beautiful Las Vegas. And like, you look at the top of this building over here and that's where the name is. Uh, you look at some older architecture and they put little frills and gargoyles and things at the top of the building. Um, you got clouds, you got birds, you got planes, you got shooting stars. And we spend a lot of time stressed out. Where, where am I going? What am I doing next? Whether you're looking at your phone, you're looking at the ground, you're kind of like just spacing out into nowhere. And every once in a while, take a minute to just stop and look up because someone spent hours to do something right there and no one looked at it. And I have spent so many times like noticing things that people go their entire life without seeing by just looking up, both physically and metaphorically. Yeah, yeah, I like it. That is, that's awesome. Like that's it. my weird one. I've thought about that for a long time. I've never told like anyone. It. So. I love it. Uh, well, right on, Liam. It's been super fun having you on. Uh, we've got more show to see. We've got more people to see. So uh, we got to wrap it up here. But definitely want to do this again sometime. I can tell that like we could have talked for two more hours easy like maybe with some water but uh <laughs> a little bit of cotton mouth but uh dude this conversation has been awesome um thanks for uh, getting us out here and uh really like pushing up like 
I always thought, like, oh yeah, SEMA is, when we're big, we could do SEMA. When we're big, we can do SEMA. Like, no, come out and do SEMA now. Yeah. yeah. And thanks for pushing us. Like, this has been an amazing opportunity and it has exceeded my most wild expectations. Well, and I'm going to be honest with you guys. Like, I was talking with a coworker a few months ago and I'm like, yeah, we don't have a booth this year and I don't really have any, like, agenda. I don't have anything I'm, like, trying to do at the show this year. And they're like, dude, then why are you going? Like, why are you taking all of this time out of your day, all like vacation and this and airplanes and all of that? Like, why are you going? And I'm like, well, I gotta go. And then when you guys said that you were coming, I was like, and that's why I'm going. Like, yep. for like, there was a couple of minutes where I'm like, I don't really wanna go. And I'm like, whoa, no, no, the, the Days of Pain of Victory guys are gonna be there. And then I was like, I have to be there. Like, I, I really wanna see these guys. And yeah, I'm, that's awesome, I'm really glad that you guys made it out. Like, yeah. When I see you going through the hall and you're talking to people, it, I, I get so excited. That's awesome. All right. Well, uh, Alex and I have been filming a ton of content this week. Uh, we're, I think we're going to have eight or nine videos from this week. So lots of content coming at you. Um, lots more full-size Jeep stuff. Um, got a little partnership with Torquelift. I'm excited to show you guys. And uh, yeah. Yeah. That's uh, Let's do it. Do it. We'll wreck it, wrench and repeat. Until next time. See ya.